The man at the forefront of the legal war over voting rights, attorney Mark Elias, writes this, quote, Republicans have an election fraud problem. No matter how hard they look, they can't seem to find any. The crown jewel of right-wing fraud propaganda, the Heritage Foundation's election fraud database, only claims that there have been 1,332 instances of proven voter fraud in more than 30 years. When you consider that there are thousands of local, state, and federal elections every two years, 1,332 is a drop in the ocean, not a bucket. Which brings us to where we are now. In their desperation, Republicans are developing new definitions of fraud to undo future elections that they don't like. Ergo, the new laws that we've seen enacted at alarming speed. Of them, Elias writes this, quote, Each of these new provisions transforms normal, even exemplary, behavior into voter fraud. Provide water to the thirsty. Fraud. Help citizens apply for absentee ballots. Fraud. Prevent mass challenges to lawful votes. Fraud. By manufacturing fraud from ordinary activity, Republicans create the foundation to challenge election results in 2022 and 2024. By manufacturing fake fraud, these new laws provide defeated candidates in 2022 and 2024 with the propaganda necessary to support their own big lies in the future. The increasingly shameful and desperate fight to preserve American democracy from Republicans is where we start this hour with the aforementioned Mark Elias, voting rights attorney and founder of the Democracy Docket. You, you know, I love that Elizabeth Warren outburst about what is shameful. I mean, what is shameful is the Republicans' effort to do exactly what you articulate there. They're, they're making it, they're changing what the definition of fraud is. Um, to these good government practices, as you so correctly point out, so that next time when they claim they didn't really lose, they were just the victims of fraud, they'll have a legislative ground to stand on. That's exactly right, Nicole. I mean, this is, I think, part of the Republican long game. They realized that they lost in 2020 because more people voted for Joe Biden than voted for Donald Trump. And Donald Trump tried a version of this in the big lie to claim that it was a result of fraud. But of course, there was no fraud. There was nothing fraudulent in the election for him to grasp onto. So what Republicans are doing now is they are redefining ordinary and even exemplary behavior and redefining it to be fraudulent so that when people engage in this behavior, like handing a bottle of water to someone who's thirsty, the Republicans can now say, you see, that was all fraudulent. And it's a really pernicious way that I think Republicans are preparing to challenge the results of the elections in the future. Um, I want to ask you about the cases that, that you and your team have filed, but I, I want to read some more from, from your new piece about fake fraud. You write, the primary audience for this macabre spectacle will not be the courts. The Republicans have learned that even the most conservative judges are hesitant to throw out an election based on manufactured evidence of fake fraud. Instead, their audience will be partisan officials responsible for counting ballots and certifying election. These officials, ranging from county canvas board members to secretaries of state and governors, are responsible for tallying the polling place vote totals and creating a countywide or statewide certified election result. These are the exact people, and we can find most of their names because ultimately um, news outlets reported on who Donald Trump called. These are the exact people, and Brad Raffensperger is perhaps the most famous, but wasn't the only one. These are the exact people who are being primaried and pushed out from Democratic and Republican ranks for Trumpy people. And these are the exact people who Donald Trump needed in his corner to have a different outcome in 2020. Do you feel like if 2020 were to happen again, if we were to call an election tomorrow, that Trump has installed enough loyalists to have the outcome different? Look, I think that the, the greatest risk to our democracy, I've written this before, is in the election certification process. So, you know, you outlined in the introduction two things. Number one, make sure people can vote. The second is that their vote counts. The third, which we didn't used to have to think about in America, was that once the votes are counted, that the people responsible for, you know, the calligraphy certificates and putting a seal on a fancy document would do their jobs. 
And I am very worried that the certification process in our country, which is essential to being seated in the House and in the Senate and to having your electors um, vote during the Electoral College, that that ceremony of democracy is being is going to be hijacked by Republican partisans as a way to prevent uh, the lawful seating or the lawful uh, uh, victors from taking their office. So I'm very worried about it. Look at who the Trump people are putting up for uh, for Secretary of State. Look at who they're they're endorsing in those races at the county level. You know, it wasn't just Raffenberger in Georgia. Remember, President Trump tried to um, call and and intervene in the in the uh, Wayne County Canvassing Board right. in uh, in Michigan, and then the state mm -hmm. the state canvassing board in Michigan. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I want to ask if you see this even more sort of starkly in light of the Eastman memo. I mean, they put they actually put their coup plot on paper. Um, it either signals their stupidity or their brazenness or their certainty that ultimately they would overturn the, the will of the vote. Do you feel like I mean, and Republicans understand that because many Republican senators and House members got a copy of the Eastman memo. Do you feel like Democrats understand what's happening under their noses? You know, I'm not sure. Uh, it's one of the things I worry about. It's one of the things that I worry about is that the other side is single-mindedly focused on this issue. You know, the thing that unites the Republican Party from top to bottom, from east to west, is election administration and to make voting harder, to install, install their loyalists in positions of power in the counting and certification process, and to perpetuate the big lie. And Democrats, and, and this is not to say that there are not a myriad of important issues for the country, there are, but Democrats are have their attention scattered across a variety of pressing issues facing the country. And I worry that the that 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 Republicans single minded focus on this gives them an advantage and that Democrats need to be aware of that. There's this scene, I've quoted this before, but in, in um, uh, Tom Cruise and Cuba Gooding, and he says, you know, help me help you. I mean, help me help you explain. I mean, as a former Republican, what you're saying is absolutely correct. They have no governing agenda. They have no reverence for the rule of law. They have no respect for the institutions in which they serve, which is why they did not vote to hold Steve Bannon in contempt of Congress. They are only focused on changing the rules of the road. And it's not even for 2024. Donald Trump could run again and lose again. But I'm not sure Joe Biden would be seated, would be voted in. And, and I, I wonder what else needs to be conveyed to put this issue front and center. Look, I think that you do a great job with this, and and thank you for that. I think the other thing, which, again, you do a really good job in, but some of your colleagues in the media don't, is having a pro-democracy bent. You know, part of the problem is it's so easy to report politics as a sport between who's up and who's down that you wind up losing the morality of it and the right and wrong of it. And that, I think, is super important. The other thing is to not allow these things to be disconnected. The rules that affect how people vote are the same rules that will allow Republicans to subvert elections, the same rule that is going to make the mother of three children waiting in line for three hours not be able to stand in line because they, she doesn't have any water is the same rule that is going to allow Republicans to say that that mother of three is a lawbreaker and should be criminally prosecuted. So we need to make sure that we are looking at these things from January 6th to voter suppression to uh, uh, attacks on election subversion, that these are all of a piece. They're all the centerpiece of the Republican Party agenda. Without federal voting rights legislation, what can you accomplish ahead of the 2022 or 2024 elections in court? Look, what my job is, is to every day wake up and fight in court um, for democracy. You know, we're going to win some, we're going to lose some, but fundamentally it is the job of the courts to protect fundamental rights when the political branches fail to do so. And right now, the political branches are not just failing to protect uh, constitutional rights, they are going out of their way in state after state to trample on those rights. So what I do every day is go to court and try to fight that. In the end, I, what I hope to do is to buy time for democracy. I'm not going to solve democracy in court. No one's going to solve democracy in courts. But if we are able to throw enough uh, uh, up 
to prevent these bad laws from taking effect, and we're able to push off the effects of the big lie and Republican election subversion for another two years, four years, six years, then maybe the country can come to its senses. Maybe there can be a break of the fever of anti-democracy within the Republican Party, and we can restore to something closer to normal.